To solve this coronavirus issue, we need to have a new plan, Stan. Hello again, everyone. I'm Eli's dad with Project Eli, where we educate, lead, and inspire. And just a little while ago, I was watching the news and I saw what they're doing in Sweden and was kind of comparing it to what we do here. And boy, it really kind of upset me a little bit. And I want to go over the wine because and let's talk about a plan. You know, what they're doing in Sweden is essentially they're keeping their economy going. The restaurants are open, the bars are open, everything's open. They do have a few rules, okay, when you're at a restaurant, they want you to keep an arm's, an arm's length away from somebody. But for all intents and purposes, they're just keeping standard operating procedure, what they would normally do in a normal society, because they're keeping their economy going. The one thing that they recognize they need to do better, and they didn't do a good job at this at the beginning, is to protect those people in the upper age group that are more vulnerable to the virus because they have some preconditions. So about half of their people that have passed away, passed away in home care facilities. So that's something that they're not doing, they weren't doing particularly well, but now they're focusing on and doing a better job with it. And when you take a look at their numbers, their numbers, they have, they, now Sweden's a small country, they have about 2,400 or so people that have, that have died from this thing. And the countries around them, Norway, as an example, they, they're sitting around 200. So you say to yourself, what the heck's going on here? What's your point here? Well, there's two ways to approach this thing. And this is the way Sweden's approaching it. What they're saying is, you know, when most people get this thing, you know, people that aren't in the vulnerable bracket, when most people get this thing, typically what happens is they live, it goes by, and they get immune from it. And certainly they're going to have some deaths from it, but what they're doing is they're doing some long-term thinking. This is, this is their plan. They're doing some long-term thinking. And so right now, they have about, I think the number was 26% of the people have already tested positive for the virus. And the way they're figuring it is, once we get up to that, that number, which is somewhere in the 70 to 75% range, then they'll have herd immunity, and then they'll be able to be living a normal lifestyle. And so what they're banking on is that in the long run, in the long run, we will have less people die by making sure that everybody tests positive to it and create herd immunity than if we lock everything down. So that's one approach, and it's kind of the approach, you know, and it's not unique to Sweden because, you know, if you want to stop and think about World War II, we, the United States, are the only people that have ever dropped an atomic bomb on anybody, and we did it twice in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and the destruction and the death was astronomical, but the reasoning behind that was, well, if we go and we do that now, in the long run, it will save lives because they'll see that, hey, we can't go on with this war anymore. And so that was a strategy World War II. Now today, if somebody did that, you may not, you may not be able to reason it out that well, but that was the reasoning back then. So there is some historical precedent for doing something like that. So once again, Sweden is figuring, all right, everybody's going to catch it, everyone's going to be positive, the results will be pretty good because the percentages of people that actually die from it that are not in the vulnerable, uh, you know, arena is very, very small and will create herd immunity. On the other hand, we have China who took away everybody's civil liberties, you know, locked everybody down, and that's the way they're stopping it until a vaccine comes about and then they'll be able to have herd immunity because no one will catch it. So there were two, two essential approaches to it. And what about us? What about the United States? Well, we have 50 different plants. We got men in the territories. We got 50 states. This governor is going to do that. This, that governor is going to do this. And you know, one of the things about the virus is 
it never takes a vacation. It doesn't quit at 5 o'clock. It doesn't stop on the weekends. It continues and continues and continues, and it doesn't recognize borders between Georgia and Alabama. So here's my point. We don't have an effective plan. What we have is piecemeal doing this, piecemeal doing that, and when you stop and think about it, aren't we really begging for a big second wave when you operate with 50 different strategies instead of one united strategy? I mean, even the strategy of Sweden, where, and I'm in favor more of the lockdown, but I can understand the reasoning behind Sweden's strategy of let's get it out there, let's have everybody get it that's going to get it. Yeah, we're going to have some deaths, but if you measure the deaths that we're going to have in the long run versus what everyone else is going to have because they're trying to cut it down, our numbers are going to be smaller than their numbers. Okay, that's a strategy. It's a strategy. We don't have a strategy. This is the time for our doctors, for our government to say we need to be the United States of America and have one strategy. Now it can be one or the other, either one of those will work until we get a vaccine that's, that's effective, but doing it piecemeal with 50 different strategies is bound to fail in my very humble opinion. And because we never end a meeting on a philosophical note, tell me what you think, get out there and charge! I'm Eli's dad.